Welcome to this crash course on operating systems, the powerful behind the scenes software that keeps all our devices running smoothly. Did you know that over 6.8 billion devices around the world rely on an operating system? From your phone and laptop to smart fridges and cloud servers, the OS plays a crucial role in managing everything that happens under the hood. Yet, for many, the inner workings of an OS remain a mystery. In this session, we're going to demystify the 20 core concepts of operating systems, making them easy to understand and practical to apply. Whether you're a student, a developer, or just curious about how computers work at a deeper level. So, what exactly are we going to cover? First, we'll start with the basics, understanding what the kernel is and how it differs from a program. Then, we'll dive into processes and threads, the building blocks of modern computing. Next up, we'll explore how multitasking works, and we'll break down the difference between concurrency and parallelism. We'll also look at CPU scheduling algorithms, the rules that decide which process get to run and when. After that, we'll move into memory management, including concepts like virtual memory, paging, and segmentation. We'll cover interrupts and context switching, key features that help the OS respond to real-time events and switch between tasks efficiently. Then, we'll explore how file systems organize and manage data. And of course, we'll talk about system pitfalls like deadlock and livelock and how they can freeze up your system. To solve these problems, we'll introduce you to synchronization tools like semaphores and mutexes. Finally, we'll wrap up with how user mode and kernel mode work, what system calls are, and how the Memory Management Unit, or MMU, handles address translation. The kernel is the core component of an operating system. It directly interfaces with hardware and manages system resources. It handles processes, memory, scheduling, input and output operations, device communication, and system stability. Most kernels are monolithic or microkernel based. Think of the kernel as the air traffic controller at a busy airport. It coordinates all takeoffs and landings, manages the runways and gates, and ensures everything runs smoothly and safely without collisions. A program is a passive set of instructions stored on disk. It becomes active when loaded into memory by the operating system. Multiple instances of the same program can run as separate processes. It's like a recipe in a cookbook. Just words on paper until a chef, the OS, actually starts following those instructions to cook a meal. And just as multiple chefs can use copies of the same recipe to cook different meals simultaneously, multiple processes can run from the same program. A process is a running instance of a program. It contains its own allocated memory, CPU registers, and resources. Processes are managed by the OS and can be in states like running, ready, waiting, or terminated. For instance, when you open three Chrome browser windows, you've created three separate processes, each with its own memory space and resources, even though they're all running the same program. Threads are smaller units within a process. They share the same memory, but execute independently, allowing tasks to run in parallel with one program. If a process is like a factory, threads are like workers in that factory. They all work in the same building, shared memory, but each can perform different tasks simultaneously while accessing the same tools and materials. Multitasking is the OS's ability to manage multiple processes at once. It switches rapidly between processes to give the illusion of simultaneous execution. It's similar to a chef preparing multiple dishes at once, not by cooking them all simultaneously, but by working on one dish while another simmers, then checking on a third while waiting for ingredients to mix in the second. The chef isn't truly doing everything at once, but all dishes make progress toward completion. Concurrency means tasks are making progress together, 
even if one at a time. Parallelism means tasks run at the exact same time on multiple processors. Both improve performance, but they're not the same. Concurrency is like a single chef quickly switching between cooking multiple dishes in one kitchen. Parallelism is like having multiple chefs each cooking different dishes in their own cooking stations simultaneously. Scheduling decides which process runs and for how long. Algorithms like first come, first serve, round robin, priority scheduling, and shortest job first are used to optimize efficiency and fairness. Think of it like managing patients in an emergency room. Some algorithms would treat patients in order of arrival. Others might use a rotation system, giving each patient some attention before moving on. While others prioritize based on emergency severity or estimated treatment time. Virtual memory extends RAM using hard disk space. It lets programs run as if they have more memory than physically available, enhancing multitasking and efficiency. It's like having a small desk, RAM, but a large filing cabinet nearby, your hard drive. When your desk gets full, you can temporarily move some papers to the cabinet, freeing up desk space for urgent work. This creates the illusion of having a much larger workspace than your actual desk. Paging breaks memory into fixed size blocks, called pages. It allows non-contiguous memory use and reduces fragmentation. Think of paging like standardized shipping containers. By packing cargo into uniform containers, ships can efficiently stack and arrange them in any order. Similarly, paging organizes memory into standard sized chunks that can be placed wherever there's space available. Segmentation splits programs into variable length segments like code, data, and stack. It allows better organization, but introduces fragmentation challenges. Imagine organizing a bookshelf where you group books by subject, novels, textbooks, magazines, each taking different amounts of space. It makes logical sense and helps you find things. But as you add and remove books, you might end up with awkward gaps that are too small for certain categories. Interrupts signal the CPU to stop what it's doing and handle important events. They allow the OS to quickly respond to inputs like key presses or I.O. operations. Think of interrupts like a surgeon being paged during a meeting. No matter what they're doing, they pause, handle the emergency, and then return to their previous task, preserving all context about where they left off. A file system organizes how data is stored and retrieved on disks. It structures files and directories, control permissions, and maintains data integrity. It's like a well-organized library with books, your files, arranged in sections and shelves, your directories, with a catalog system that tracks where everything is located. The librarian, your file system, also controls who can borrow which books and ensures they're returned in good condition. Live lock happens when processes keep responding to each other but make no progress. They're not blocked, just busy, and need intervention to resolve. Imagine two people meeting in a hallway, each trying to be polite by moving aside to let the other pass. They both step to the same side, notice the problem, and step to the other side together again. They keep moving but never get past each other. That's a live lock. Deadlock is when processes wait forever for each other's resources. The system gets stuck unless action is taken. Deadlock prevention and detection are key OS responsibilities. Picture four cars at a four-way intersection, each wanting to go straight across, but each having arrived at the same time. If all four drivers decide to wait for someone else to go first, they'll be stuck forever. That's a deadlock. A semaphore is a signal-based tool for synchronization processes. It prevents race conditions by controlling access to shared resources.
Think of it as a ticket system for a bathroom with limited stalls. Each person takes a ticket upon entering and returns it when leaving. If all tickets are taken, newcomers must wait until someone returns a ticket, ensuring we never exceed capacity. A mutex is a locking mechanism, ensuring only one thread accesses a resource at a time. It guarantees mutual exclusion and protects data integrity. It's like a single key bathroom where only one person can enter at a time. When someone goes in, they lock the door, acquire the mutex. Others must wait until that person exits and unlocks the door, releases the mutex, before entering themselves. A system call lets a user program request a service from the kernel. It's the bridge between user mode and kernel mode. Think of it like placing an order at a restaurant. You, the user program, don't go into the kitchen, kernel, yourself. You make a request through the waiter, or the system call, who takes your order to the restricted area where only authorized staff can go. User mode is restricted. Kernel mode has full system access. Switches between them happen through system calls and interrupts, ensuring security and control. It's like the difference between being a visitor at a factory versus being the factory manager. As a visitor, user mode, you can only access public areas and must ask permission for anything else. The manager, kernel mode, has a master key and can access everything, including critical control systems. The MMU translates virtual addresses into physical ones. It supports memory protection, paging, and segmentation, making memory safer and more efficient. Think of the MMU as a hotel concierge. When you ask for room 501, the virtual address, the concierge checks their system and directs you to the actual physical location, while also ensuring you're authorized to access that room in the first place. Context switching saves the current process state so another can run. It's essential for multitasking, but adds some performance overhead. Imagine you're reading three different books, switching between them every few minutes. Each time you switch, you need to bookmark your page and remember where you left off in the story, your saving state. Then, recall what happened previously in the next book, your loading state. These transitions take time. That's your performance overhead.